Barclay, welcome to TFNN. Hey, Tom, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Well, listen, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, you know, uh, we know uh, the Bank of the Ozarks does so much for communities uh, across the country. And let me, so let me, let me ask you, first off, is, is Bank of the Ozark a community bank, a regional bank? Where, where does that get placed? That's a great question. So about three years ago, we rebranded ourselves Bank OZK, so it pays homage to what we were, Bank of the Ozarks. But it's really more characteristic of the fact that we are a regional and national bank, I would say. We're in the top 50 U.S. banks, mostly in the southeast, but we have offices in New York City and in San Francisco. Yes. And folks, they trade uh, under the ticker OZK. They take in a billion dollars a year. Uh, bottom line is that uh, each and every uh, day we all deal with banks, of course, across the uh, United States. Uh, you know, when, you, when we're dealing uh, with banks specifically, uh, what should folks know? I mean, I, I know that, you know, you do great work in St. Petersburg. I can see it. I'm sure there's people right across the country that see, you know, we're small business. OK, when, you, when you're dealing with a small business, um, you don't you don't. You can't use the, the monster banks because you're you get pushed to the side. <laughs> uh, bottom line, tell me, like when folks are coming in, you get entrepreneurs coming into the bank. What should they be prepared for when they want to do business? When I say when I'm saying when want to do business is that, yes, we open accounts and all that. But let's say that they they want to um, build a business. They want to build houses. They want to build um an own business. What should the folks have when they're coming into the bank? Yeah, that's a great question, Tom. I think, you know, when you have a, a, a medium sized or regional bank, you kind of have an intersection in the middle. To quote your phrase, you're not quite a monster bank, but you have more power and more technology uh, than, you know, say a very small community bank with just a couple of locations. You kind of fit uh, the best of both worlds. I think that's where, you know, our bank is at. And, you know, for someone who wants to, because that's what we like to do, we like to build and grow our community. I think having a relationship with a banker is important, not the bank. And so to know the individuals and for them to be able, for that, for your banker to be able to call decision makers and make things happen, I think is, is somewhat of a lost art. And it's, it's in this highly competitive, technologically driven world, it's, it's really a relationship that you need. There's no doubt. And folks, as you're watching Tiger TV, I know that, you know, a couple of weeks ago we had um, one of the founders of the fairgrounds on. And you can see this picture up here. And this is so cool, folks, because uh, you can see finance provided by Bank OZK. Um, you know, it's pretty it's pretty impressive, Barclay, that uh, all of us, no matter where someone's listening right now, we have small communities. We, we do want to build them out. Um, and you, the crucial part is that, you know, like, let's say if I go back 20, well, if I go back 30 years ago, unfortunately, okay, we did have more relationships like this. So the, the culture of your bank, this is a different culture, folks. Can you explain the, the culture and that how you reach out to the community? Because, folks, I do business, number one, with OZK. And, and I, let me tell you the story, folks. You, you may not know this, Barclay. I changed. So pitch this. I had a relationship with Wells Fargo for 25 years, and on the PPP, they could care less about anything. And I'm talking about millions of dollars that went through those accounts. And it was like, okay, when this thing is over, and I don't think I, I says, I'm changing everything. So, so if you, because your culture is so cool. So tell us about your culture a little. So when folks are in different states, they can understand why they, they may want to do business with you. Sure. I think there's a couple factors there, Tom. Number one, we're told to get out and to see the community and to know the community, both volunteering and, and building up the community, but also getting out and to know the business leaders, literally driving around, finding out what's going on in the market. I think you'll find from both the large loans that we do and the small loans, it generally comes from knowing the market and knowing the folks doing cool things, entrepreneurs, people involved in real estate. Um, I think also we have just a, a really cool culture. You know, we have an in-house uh, financial technology fintech lab located in St. Pete. There's, uh, I think, around 50 software engineers that are doing really cool things, you know, to make the bank uh, uh, both banker facing and customer facing uh, more competitive and to, uh, to, you know, thrive in the 21st century. 
That's that's pretty cool, man. That's that's, that's amazing. So when we do, let, let's 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 pitch it that you get the aspect that um, you have the small business. We want to do business. Well, let let's say that, that someone wants to build a, a house. Uh, the the bottom line is that they're new in the business, and we've talked about this. <laughs> they're new in the business. Uh, the the bottom line is that I, I guess they'd want as much documentation as they could get before they're walking into the bank, right? That's correct. You'd, you'd want to have, I always tell people when, when you're doing something sophisticated like building, you want to have a conversation with your banker, you want to have a conversation with your CPA, and you want to have a conversation with your attorney so that you get all three levels of advice from all of them because they're probably each going to see things slightly differently. And it's important for them, especially your CPA, to know what your plans are two or three years out in the future. Um, that's you know always a challenge is having uh, those documents where we can lend. You know underwriting standards are are, are very good. They're they're strong uh, given what happened you know 12 years ago. Sure. Um, and you know I you know it too that what's happening in the Tampa Bay area and in Florida in general we are just very bullish on what's happening in, in the economy specifically residential real estate. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. So inside of the, the, the aspect that, that we, we have the bank, we're, we're growing out communities. Talk to me about uh, a bit about, because you just brought this up. And, and folks, this is so cool because this did happen 30 years ago, that you are involved on the community because you're, you're building out a neighborhood. So tell us how the bank helps neighborhoods get built out. Well, we finance real estate. We finance people who are investing in real estate, building real estate. You know, simple things like building a single family home for yourself or for someone else, but also building, you know, townhomes for sale, condos for sale, uh, things of that nature. We also help nonprofits. We have a lot of nonprofit clients who rely on the bank for their needs. And um, that's not just uh, financing and deposits. It's also time. You know, we, we encourage our employees, highly encourage them to serve on boards, to volunteer their time. And all of this kind of circles back to knowing your, your market, knowing your neighbor, um, and it also does good in the community. Well, listen, I, I appreciate uh, what you do for St. Pete, uh, the Tampa area, in a big way. I uh, appreciate the education, and absolutely, uh, folks, the, uh, of course, it's, it's the bank of the OZK. Uh, the website uh, is the exact same, uh, ozk.com. Bakla, you have a great one, safe one, and of course we look forward to having you back on again. Tom, thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Appreciate it.